Hello everyone, Shalia here, and maybe starting off, happy Valentine's Day. You might be wondering why I'm completely in red today. Um, I wanted to give the day a bit of um, honor, the day of love. Today I saw um, Tarkin on the street and he said to me, shouldn't every day be Valentine's Day, Shalia? And I said, yes, it absolutely should. Um, but there you go, happy Valentine's Day. In today's video, I would like to talk about waking up to thought. And this is a video that I am creating today as per requested um, by a dear friend of mine by Leek. So Leek, here you go. He wanted to hear about um, my experience of waking up to thought. And being a coach myself, it might seem odd that I had a waking up to thought, <laughs> but I absolutely did. Um, it was in 2015, and I'm going to talk about that today, what that, what that looked like for me. But maybe just to go back a little before that, what, what did I know before? Well, I knew before that, that I am not my thought, right? Um, I knew that I couldn't be because I was able to observe the thoughts I was having. I could, I could see sort of the dialogue in my head, the little, the little voice that runs um, in our mind every day, all day that no one else can hear but ourself. Like I'd, I kind of gotten awake to that, to that fact. And as a coach, I had spent a lot of time before 2015 listening to about other people about what they were thinking. Um, so I knew that other people were also having <laughs> these thoughts. They, they were able to observe their own thoughts as well. And up until that time, I had looked at thoughts as being constructive thinking or not constructive thinking, um, things to the point where when we would have a constructive thought, we would think we would, we would do better, feel better. And if we were have destructive thinking, we would not do as well, um, not feel as well. And things started to shift in 2015 and, and in this way. So I was at a, I was at an event in, in Oslo in Norway, um, hosted by a three principals uh, school there. And they had gotten George and Lynn Sapransky to come over from, from America and to talk about the three principles. And I think if I'm not mistaken, it was a, a two day event. Um, and George and Linda are a really, really sweet couple. Um, they, they sat in front of the room, ever present and really calm and set the pace for the two days in such a way that was just, I can only describe it as a, a really slow down atmosphere, a really slow down present and connected atmosphere. And I really enjoyed being in that space as I usually was in more of a state of going faster than that. <laughs> That's not the only way that I can explain it. Um, thinking faster, doing faster, going to such a training to get this information at 10, that information at 12, that information at two, like, and this was, this was a whole different feeling and environment. And George and Linda talked about a change in paradigm um, in the way that we look at human beings, how they, how they show up in the world, um, how they how they work they were they were kind of saying like we've sort of got here this um manual for human beings <laughs> this is how humans work and this is what role thought plays and so on and so forth and i was really interested and i listened really really deeply on those two days but i don't know if you've you've noticed this about yourself like sometimes you you're at an event you're there to just gather information like i thought i was there to just get more information what I didn't expect to get was a personal insight. And what the personal insight was, or, or rather how it, got, how it got triggered, was George said something, and I remember I, like it was yesterday, him standing in front of the room, 
and talking about not having to think so much about how we're doing in the world. And that really struck me. And he, and he said something to the effect of, do you ever notice how when you're thinking about how you're doing in the world, you know, that it just feels, it can just feel stressful. And I think it was on day one. And then the next day I came back and I remember thinking, I, I raised my hand to, to, to share at least what I thought I was seeing about that. And what I realized was I was asking myself the question, how am I doing all day, every day? I was asking myself the question of how am I doing as a wife? How am I doing as a friend? How am I doing as a coach? Um, one question that I particularly love to ask myself in circles was, how am I doing in my business? Am I successful enough? Am I putting the right image out there? Am I making enough money? Am I creating the right programs? Um, am I charging enough? Um, is it worth what I'm charging? Um, what should I be doing next, right? So all variations of how am I doing in this world as a human being on this planet? And I had the realization in those two days that man, that, that constant asking myself how I'm doing is, is really stressing me out, right? It's really causing me or causing a feeling of stress in my being, constantly checking in with myself, constantly checking in with myself and asking myself these questions. And so that was the first time I was w woken up to these thoughts that I was having and not just thoughts as being constructive or not constructive, but the fact that they were in this case, just permeating my, my, my hours, my days, my weeks, and just really noticing for the first time how having all these thoughts going around in, in my head and asking myself how I'm doing all day long, what effect that was having on my, oh, my physiognomy, my body, feeling stress in my body, um, how much it was um, making me feel mentally weary. Um, and wondering to myself, is there another, a better question I could be asking myself? <laughs> like at that time, I remember thinking, is there a better question I could be asking myself? But I didn't know at the time that that was not really the, the direction to look in. So that was the first part of awakening to thought. And then the second part of awakening to thought came later in the year. So I guess that was in March in 2015. And then I had booked a VIP intensive um, with Nicola Bird in, in London. Hi, Nicola, if you hear this at any point. And I flew over to the UK. I, I was in this really great hotel. I took a taxi cab every day over to Woking, just this rural area where Nicola lives in a farmhouse. And we just kind of sat down together over three days and I had booked the, the intensive originally as being sort of a, like a business sort of thing. I thought we were going to work on um, my business model. I thought we were going to work on um, new packages for my business as a new offers, new pricing. I had this whole list of things that I had prepared and wanted to work on. Now I knew that, that, that Nicola didn't work in the way that we were going to sit down and work out a strategy. Um, I knew we were going to look inside, but I was pretty sure we we're going to have to talk about these points. Otherwise, who what were we going to look inside about? And Nicola humored me on the first, on the first day and she got out a flip chart and, and I wrote down like all the stuff or she wrote down, I don't know who, who had the pen in the hand, but you know, we, we created this like really long list of things that, that I wanted to look at. And these are things that have been on my mind for quite a while and I wanted to solve them. And on those three days, we did a lot of laying around on the couch. I remember that <laughs> very specifically thinking, this is the weirdest coaching environment I've ever been in. We're just like laying around on her couches in her, in her study or whatever the room is you call it. 
and we talked a lot about thought and i and if i remember correctly and i don't know if i do but i think i remember it being something around the idea of thoughts are like clouds in the sky our our general well-being is is the blue open space that we see when the clouds move by that's always there that was always there and then we get weather on top of that well-being like this this thought energy coming in like really sweet clouds that are all fluffy and look like sheep uh, that are nice and then other other clouds that come in that are look more like thunder thunder and lightning in 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 a black you know cloud and looking at the fact that those that weather is it, it can't stay there it's it's always coming and going it's always coming and going and at the end of those three days looking at my list on the flip chart my laundry list of problems that i thought i had to solve and waking up to the fact that all that those thoughts all those things were on the on the chart were thoughts that i've been thinking about over and over and over and over and over again every day like a like a broken record and waking up to the fact that those thoughts were like background music in my life right just making a lot of noise a lot of noise a lot of noise but me believing that they were the main show. And so putting all my attention constantly trying to solve those problems. I don't know, it might've been five things, it might've been seven things, it might've been nine things. I don't know exactly how many points were on that board. But realizing that if it weren't for that, thinking about those seven points, let's just say it was seven, that I was absolutely fine, that, that, that I had just mistaken that background noise of thought as something important and got lost in thinking about it, focusing on it, trying to figure it out. And on that day, I could see very, very clearly that everything there stopped being there the moment I took the importance off of it. And, and I remember going home for the first time and in, in years, just getting up the next morning and not having all that broken record thinking on my mind, just feeling, just feeling three tons lighter. Um, now that thought came back that thought came back it wasn't gone forever because thought, thought always comes back it's 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 like the air we breathe it's like the blood that's circulating in our veins it's it's it it's an energy that belongs to life just like the sunshine on our skin and it it came back but the difference was when it came back what i had woken up to was the fact that it's it's just there it's just going to come and go and it and and it doesn't mean anything it doesn't mean i have a problem it doesn't mean i have to do anything about it and i can just let it be come and go as it does so that was the second part of waking up to thought and at that time in my life because i had been obsessively thinking the same thoughts over and over again every day for years when i when i stopped hanging out in that space on the inside what happened was even though those thoughts started coming back they 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 didn't fill up the entire space they they left some room for some new thinking and the more i was able to recognize and notice what was going on, the more space that kept getting created on the inside for new thinking. And the more and more as I would go forward though, the lighter things began to feel. 
and the less seriously I would take thought as a specific thinking or as an energy. And then later, the third part of waking up to thought was when I stopped categorizing. So I used to categorize my thinking in the form of this is good thought, I feel good when I think that. This is bad thought, I feel bad when I think that. I don't think I can control either of, of the two, whichever one's there, but when they're there, this, this does this, this does that. And I would be very aware, trying to recognize bad thinking because I didn't want to feel bad, right? But I never put my, my attention onto the good thinking. And then at some point I woke up to the fact that all forms of thought are of the same quality. And one of, one of my favorite pictures that I, I, I like to think about when I think about this is um, I have this fantasy in my head of a, um, <laughs> of, a, of a beach in Hawaii. I've never been to Hawaii, but I'd like to go someday. And I have this fantasy that there are these just paradisical um, beaches and that when you sit on this beautiful light sand that's soft and you look out into the ocean, it's all like turquoise or, or, or deep blue or all shades of that. And I imagine that there are five people, 10 people, 15 people sitting on the beach on, on, on towels. Let's say they're on towels, why not? And I imagine being behind them and looking at the backs of their heads in this paradise, and I see that there are some sort of staff from a hotel or I don't know where, and they come and bring platters of um, pineapples and um, tropical fruits and cocktails and just beautiful drinks, and they serve it to the people. And I imagine that I look into the mind, the, the, the small human mind of, of one person on the beach, and that person is thinking, oh my gosh, this is a, a total paradise here. I can't even believe that I get to experience this. Who gets to come to Hawaii? And he takes a drink of his uh, cocktail and it just tastes amazing. And he feels like, oh, just this full gratitude for being, for being in this place. And he's got this, you know, uh, he just feels happy. And then I imagine the next person beside him and, um, it's a, it's a woman, and let's say she's just at the age um, where she's coming into menopause, and I'm reading her mind, and she is just miserable. She's thinking, it's way too hot here. I didn't have, bring my fan with me. It's in the hotel room. Um, how am I going to get through this time to the sunset? <laughs> she's just like freaking out in her mind's eye, like this horrible hot weather, and not even at all being able to... Um, see this beautiful scenery as something good like in her in her reality that she has because of thought she's seeing this as like a, a bit of a horrible place at the moment right and then i was imagining um somebody else beside her a man and he was looking out onto the water and in his mind when i was reading it he was having thoughts of his fru um his earlier um wife who left him for another man and he's thinking i would love to enjoy this, but I can't without Matilda. Like without her, this means nothing. And the reality that he's got going on or filtered through his thought, this is looking to him like a very sad place at the moment um, and full of pining. And then another person beside him, and, and it's a lady again, and she's she has got her feet dug down into the sand. She's like putting her feet down there and putting her toes in and going toward the water and she's just in this mind of, of thinking everything feels so good it's just amazing it's softer than at home the water's just lukewarm um, and she's finding this to be a sensory experience that she's she's never had before and you could go down the line to all the other 5, 10, 15, 20 people, and you could see any version of thoughts coming up, like we are 
and endlessly creative when it comes to what we can think about the place and realizing that good or bad, if I were to ask myself, reading the minds of those people who I'm looking at from behind, which one of them is living in truth? Like who's got the true thoughts and who's got the false thoughts? I would have to say, I wouldn't be able to distinguish. There, there, there is no truth in, in, in any of that. It's just thought in the moment manifesting in a, in a personal reality of the same exact beach and the same exact circumstances. So waking up to the fact that our thinking is this beautiful, fantastical fantasy energy that can create anything at any moment, no matter where we were. And if I were to take the same 5, 10, 15, 20 people and I would, I would turn my back on them, walk away for 15 minutes and come back. And I'd read their minds again. Well, they could be thinking something new in the next five minutes. The lady with, who, who's needing her fan, her hot flash has gone by and she's thinking something else, right? It, it's, it's, it's transient. And that's a beautiful thing. So I, I started thinking less of my good thinking. Um, it's, it's no different than my bad thinking. It's just something I don't question because it, it doesn't bother me as much. And then the final thing I wanted to say about waking up to thought, and Leek, you asked for it, so I'm doing it all the way today, is to realize that all that transient thinking that's coming and going, it is, it is just there for me to have experiences in life. It is, it is the stuff of which experiences are made of. And if I don't, if I don't try to change it, if I don't try to want something different than the experience that I'm having in the moment, if I don't try to manipulate it into something else, if I don't get too much of a preference for one thing or the other, and just let the creative energy of thought just be, I tend to have a much more wonderful life and that underlying well-being that, that I was born with is just much closer to, to reach, to grasp at any, any given moment because I'm not, I'm getting less and less confused by, by the veil of thought that comes and goes and being able to see more often the blue sky background before the weather. And, and what that space brings is just a sense of peacefulness, sense of lovingness. Um, it's a space of wisdom where I can, where I can feel that I know what to do next in my life. It's a place where I can, go and grab up uh, ide creative ideas and create new stuff in the world. Yeah, recently um, I was thinking of the metaphor of the bride, like if thought is the veil of the bride, it belongs to the bridal experience, but the true thing that, that, that makes me excited and what I'm always more and more looking for is when you when you lift the veil and see the beautiful bride underneath, the bride that is that is the, the, the beautiful intelligence behind life that, that makes us alive. Yeah, so that's it. That's my, um, my video for today, Waking Up to Thought. What did you see in that? What did you hear in that today? I'd love to hear your thoughts. Um, share them with me here in the comment area. And um, I will totally be glad to write you back. You're very welcome, Sherry. Come on in any time of the day. I'm going to be doing some more English videos soon. So, so good to see you here. Have a wonderful day. Bye, guys. Have a great weekend.